Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much to the People's Forum for hosting us. Uh, thank you to, yeah, give them a round yeah. of applause. Woo, we love the People's Forum. Yeah. Best space in New York. Yes. And thank you to Breakthrough News and the Empire Files and the Katie Halper Show for co-sponsoring this event. Um, so we're going to get the show started. I'm going to introduce uh, the lovely lady sitting next to me. To the left, not politically, just physically, we have Abby <laughs> Martin. But also, also politically. No, but like, I'm but not I'm saying she's left. to the left of us. Oh, no, but no, 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 okay, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, Spoiler alert, she's on the left, yeah. Oopsies. So on the left, ultra left yes. equally. I haven't even had wine yet. I know. <laughs> equally on the left as us is Abby Martin, who is the host and producer of The Empire Files. She's also Ooh. the director of the amazing documentary, Gaza Fights for Freedom. Thank you, Thank you so much. And the forthcoming documentary, Earth's Great. Greatest Enemy. G Earth's Greatest Enemy. OK, there you go. There you have it, which I can't wait to see. And then to my right, physically but not politically, yeah. is uh, Rania Kalik, who is the host of Dispatches. Dispatches with Breakthrough News with Eugene Purrier. And she is a journalist based in Beirut. Woo, yay, Beirut. <laughs> And of course, the great Katie Halper, host of the Katie Halper Show, host of Useful Idiots, and the upcoming documentary, Commie Camp, which I can't wait to see. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks everyone, great. for braving the snow to come out here yeah, in this packed seriously. house. We are truly honored to share this space with yeah. all of you. So yeah. we're actually going to uh, talk a little bit, obviously, about Israel. We're going to talk about <laughs> the uh, genocide case that South Africa brought against them to the International Court of Justice. And uh, obviously, not everyone agrees that there is a genocide there. But before we get into that, we're going to have a debate, genocide or not. It's going to be really, really uh, heated debate. Uh, it's interesting that Israel even claims that there isn't a genocide because uh, Israelis say it so overtly. Like they literally, they say the quiet part out loud. They're actually doing South Africa a favor. They've been doing South Africa a, fa a favor and making its case by actually creating the genocidal intent, making the genocidal intent, which is required to make the case for genocide, making that so clear. But here is John Kirby of the National Security Boo. Council. Boo. Sorry. Boo. Here he is. He's going to try to convince you that there isn't a genocide. And uh, of course, uh, what I did is I made a little mashup between John Kirby and this montage that Five Pillars Media had made of Israelis making some sen some statements. You can decide for yourself. Uh, this is the same guy genocidal. who was who cried crocodile tears for Ukrainian kids, right? Yeah, yeah. only for Ukrainian kids. Okay. Uh, only white children. And no, he's upset about Israeli children and Ukrainian okay, yeah, children. Yeah. But when it comes to Palestinian children, it's a war that happens. Also, he's like a crisis actor. You can hire him. Yeah. To cry or not. <laughs> also, <laughs> depends he, who the highest bidder is. He also uses filler. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> he definitely has cheek filler. Yeah, he has I'm cheek convinced. Filler. I'm, I live in Lebanon. I know what cheek filler looks yeah, exactly, like. Yeah, exactly. So she can vouch <laughs> That's why we brought all the way from Lebanon to, to, to vouch for that, yeah. yeah. So let's take a look at John Kirby, and then on the other side, because we want to be fair and balanced, let's take a look at what Israelis actually say. Yeah. Got thrown around in a pretty inappropriate way by lots of different folks. Fake tan Israel too, huh? is not trying to wipe the Palestinian people off the map. Like a sane person. Yeah, that looks like a thug. It's an entire nation out there that is responsible. It's not true. This rhetoric about civilians not aware, we're not aware, not involved, it's absolutely not true. Israel's not trying to wipe Gaza off the map. They say it in English. It's not In Mazon, in Main, in Delik. It's all closed. We're in the lives of human we will eliminate everything. Gaza will become a place where no human being can exist. Invest this energy in one thing, erasing all of Gaza from the face of the earth. That's a Knesset member. The Gaza monsters will fly to the southern fence and try to enter Egyptian territory. They will die. Nuking Gaza is an option. Use doomsday weapons against Gaza. 
very healthy society here. Israel is trying to defend itself against a genocidal terrorist threat. So when we're going to start, if we're going to start using that word, fine, let's use it appropriately. All right, man. All right. How has yeah. no one thrown a shoe at him yet? I know. I'm, I not, know. A, I'm not advocating. An entire Let me in the press pool, An entire man. wardrobe wow. or more, yeah. So what do you guys think? Let's vote. Uh, genocide or not genocide? <laughs> anyone in the room? Anyone in the room? Genocide? Okay, yeah. All right. Two hands. Well, what's that's, crazy, that's a, yeah. That's a double yeah. vote. What's crazy is there's so many clips. You, we would yeah, take literally like yeah. a week to watch them all. But I remember when Netanyahu said... They love using telegenically dead kids. The more dead, the better. This was like, in 2018. This right? was, yeah, during the Great March of Return. And then Naftali Bennett said they're committing self genocide. So at least he admitted it, right? Naftali they're Bennett. They're just doing in it that to themselves. The clip you're talking about also added that in every house, and not just Palestinian, like Arab homes, um, Lebanon and Palestine, they have a kitchen, a bedroom, and, and a, a rocket room. launching mm -hmm. room. I didn't get one with my apartment. No one, I didn't get a rocket launching room. I'm kind of a. How can you uh, afford all that space? Like, don't you have a one bedroom? Yeah, no, I have. That's uh, more than one. Oh, okay. But so I you don't have, have a rocket launching. Uh, yeah, but I. You might as well invest come in with one. the house. Right, like, I have to come, make yeah. it myself. Yeah. Right. right. It was, must have been. That's uh, bullshit. Pre-war. Pre-war okay, yeah, house. Pre yeah. Yeah. Pre-October seventh. Yeah. Yeah. History began October seventh. Yeah. Um, well. We, again, want to be fair and balanced, and we let you hear from John Kirby, but then I think we just uh, debunked his claims. But someone else thinks that there isn't a genocide right now, and none, that, that man is the... He's, he's the epitomization of, like, progressivism, so it's a little awkward, you know? Like, he's, he's really hardcore yeah. progressive, yeah. so it's like, hmm. And we're talking about none other than... Should have been Dr. Oz... Uh, John Fetterman of Pennsylvania. Let's take a look at what he has to say. Great, great crowd. I love it. Fighting. It's a group of cowards. They hide in tunnels. They hide behind civilians. They attack, kill, and mutilate children, women, and they do that. Stop talking about proportion on that. They shot their best shot on October 7th. And they would have taken more lives if they couldn't do that, but they couldn't do it. And now let's also talk about that. Now we're being talking about genocide. And now South Africa now is now bringing that kind of a, a trial. Maybe South Africa being able to sit this one out when they're talking about criticizing. All right. He's a horrible public speaker. Is it just me? So we're hearing. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So. <laughs> Spoiler alert, little teaser. Oopsies. Like, why should, he says that as if, like, the government of South Africa right now just committed a genocide. He's like, a why white, he's a white farmer genocide guy. He's one of those guys. Yeah. yeah. The white yeah. farmer. The white farmer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. South Africa knows what apartheid is. I don't so know. They I don't have, know. yeah, I think, it's true. I think John Fetterman knows. Yeah, what John Fetterman knows what it is. Because he like, because he probably likes it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know who else should sit this one out? Because he was saying that South Africa should yeah. sit this one out, and I was just—it was—it reminded me of how Germany. Oh yeah. Was like, hey, we're gonna intervene legally uh, to help Israel in the genocide case. Well, they are genocide experts, so yeah, I'm no. torn because I feel like they are actually really experienced when it comes to that. So. Also, it is all their fault. Like, yeah, that's true. I think Germany should have to carve out like a piece of land for a Jewish state. Yeah, me too. Like from Ger like they should have to. Yeah. I mean, they they start. Can we have Berlin like, though? I've heard Berlin's really cool. I've heard Berlin's really cool. Yeah. It's supposed to be very cool. Unless a lot of Israelis they moved to. Berlin. Oh, it is true, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A yeah. lot of Israelis moved to Berlin. Yeah. But no, seriously, the audacity of Germany—it's disgusting. This is all like the original sin you created. And what I loved so much is then Namibia. Namibia was like, excuse me. You're going to what? And they were like, the presidency in Namibia released a statement. And they were like, we don't think Germany should be allowed to speak on this, considering they've never apologized for the genocide they committed right. in Namibia, which was like the OG German exactly. genocide. Right. They don't get enough credit for that genocide. No, they don't. You know? Germany, like the Germany loves genocide. Like, we should expect nothing less because they've historically and consistently, well, West Germany. We should say West yeah. Germany if, like, we have our East Germans here at all, yeah. and they're, like, upset. <laughs> safe offended. space. This is a safe space for East yeah, Germans. Yeah, safe space for East Germans. But, no, they've, like, historically always been on the side of genocide, so I guess we should expect nothing yeah. less. Yeah, they only want to atone for the white genocide, right? Yeah. Right. And yeah. It, it has been. It's erasure of the Namibia mm -hmm. genocide because yeah. the Jewish genocide has taken up the spotlight, so it's time to highlight the other one. Yeah. 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 Fair and balanced, yeah. again, as we but said. But, honestly, yeah. how disgusting is John Fetterman? 
Yeah. Bring it back to the important with thing. Him. No, that's true, yeah. If I see one more goddamn comment from that monster about the hostage posters, I wish I'm I had volunteered for Dr. Oz, seriously. <laughs> Makes me wish I had. He's a stroke survivor, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 I'm just Is saying. That? When he first, everybody liked him because they were like, oh, he's a stroke survivor. Right, right. And he's like the working class and he's like so yeah. progressive. And I but was like, like, yeah, he ne- sounds he cool. And then he was like, I love genocide. And I was like, never but mind. But he's also like a Nepo baby. He's like a rich kid. Oh. Like he like he was like basically just became mayor or something randomly, like with no experience. And he experience. tries to he's overcompensate like, by wearing sloppy, by wearing sloppy just clothes. basketball shorts. Yeah. yeah, I thought I thought because of he's like so he's basically like cosplaying. Yeah. As a yeah, 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 totally. Okay. I guess yeah. But you know, it reminds me of. Did you guys see that movie? Everyone says I love you by problematic Woody Allen. Oh God. So there's this there's this subplot no. in it where like there's a democratic like Upper East Side Democrat family and they have a son who's a Republican and they're really ashamed and then at the end of the movie spoiler alert they find out he had a brain tumor and that explains why he's a Republican. <laughs>